What the CDC dubs an epidemic grew to include Arizona this week. The Arizona Department of Health Services announced three cases of respiratory illness linked to vaping or e-cigarette use. Nationwide, more than 30 states have reported at least 530 cases, including seven deaths. Health officials are sounding alarms about a rise in the number of teens vaping, and 16% of the illnesses are reported to be among people under 18 years old. We visited one school to see how they're tackling the issue head on. These are some of the devices that have been uh, confiscated from students over the past year or so. Now in his fifth year as principal of Marana High School, David Mendel says in the last two years, he's noticed an increase in the number of students caught vaping. Um, they do come in all shapes and sizes. I mean, there's the jewel kind, which comes apart like this, and the substance is in here, and they, this heats it. And Mandel says vapor. trends here likely yeah, mirror what's happening on a wider scale. According to the Arizona Department of Health Services, more than half of all high schoolers in the state have tried vaping. Nationwide, the CDC found e-cigarette use among teens increased from 11 percent to 20 percent between 2017 and 2018. As you noted, I mean, they're small, they're hard to find, so how do you go about confiscating them? Um, you know, frankly, oftentimes when students are uh, confronted after we suspect use, they'll provide them to us. At a school with more than 2,000 students, Marana High has taken what it considers proactive measures to curb vaping on campus. While it rarely happens in class, monitors routinely check bathrooms where it's more common. Faculty and staff are also educated about the dangers and what to look for, which isn't always easy to spot. So what we see is that students will use, use the device, activate the device, and then, um, you know, the, the, the mental picture, the mental image is this huge puff of, of vapor comes out of the mouth, when in fact, if you blow it into your arm or blow it into your shirt, then you will not see it. Let's say you catch somebody with something like this. What then happens? Um, so we... we uh, we use that as an entry point with a student to understand why, or sometimes there are underlying mental health issues that the student is using this to self-medicate for. And so uh, our first, our first uh, uh, kind of avenue is what help do you need, and let's talk about that. Secondarily, um, we impose our district consequences and our school level consequences, and um, for the first instance, we really aim to remediate the behavior and to uh, engage that student in education about the impact of this on their health, their future, um, and, and all kinds of, of factors, um, school and community pride, and then uh, hope that they uh, don't engage in this again. It sounds like you have a tough stance against things like this, but you continue to see it. So what do you suppose, why do you suppose that continues to be an issue for you? Um, I, I think the reason that they're so successful nationwide is that uh, these devices are providing something that our students want or, or need or feel they need. And so we're combating, I think, uh, you know, uh, like I said, this complex issue. You know, it seems relatively simple to say this is the only issue. I think it's much broader than just this. That sentiment is shared by Allie Pierce, an English teacher at Marana High with six years in the classroom. Our students have a lot on their plates and it's really easy for them to turn to something like vaping, whether it's just a, you know, a pod with nicotine and flavor or, or THC, and they'll use it as sort of a stress reliever. Given that it's not just a distraction, there's also nicotine in these mm -hmm. items. Are you noticing a behavior change with your students? We, uh, I mean, I have absolutely had students who have been on edge, they've been really, um, grumpy or moody and you know one of the big things about teaching is building relationships with students and so when you have a good relationship with a student and you ask them like hey what's going on like you're not acting like yourself every once in a while a kid will tell me like you know I'm like I quit vaping or I'm not vaping anymore and and they're going through nicotine withdrawal. What do they tell you about where they get it and why they're doing it? So uh, pretty, it's pretty rare that a student is gonna like sh just come up to me and be like, hey, Miss Pierce, let me like tell you about my vaping paraphernalia. Um, but we overhear a lot of things and you know, we're always uh, trying to stay on top of it. Um, a lot of students will buy things online. 
Um, so I know students will use like prepaid Visa gift cards. And then um, of course they have older peers, some of them still in high school who are old enough to, to purchase it for them. Um, I've definitely had students tell me that they've uh, gotten it from their parents, like not, their parents aren't providing it, but they are, you know, they, their parents vape and, and that's available to them. And so they'll sneak it when they can. And then of course they share it amongst one another. Um, students will also, uh, you know, make their own vape juices, which is, uh, strikes me as being incredibly dangerous, but that's often where we see students with the, you know, the THC infused pods, um, which is a whole nother like layer of um, being problematic. Mendel says confiscated devices believed to contain THC, the active ingredient in marijuana, are reported to the school resource officer. Miranda High also requires students caught vaping to meet with a drug prevention coach who can go over the risks. It's a very positive uh, system uh, that we've developed. Uh, actually, a student told me the other day uh, after going through the program that they thought it was going to be just like a don't do it kind of, kind, of, kind of class and that he came out feeling like he understood the danger and would make better choices. In her classroom, Pierce started something called Mindful Mondays, where she and her students take 10 minutes to practice breathing exercises as a way to manage stress. And I've had a number of students since I started last year with this come up to me and tell me like, you know, like Miss P, I, I use this mindfulness, like I, I do the deep breathing and um, some of them have, have told me that they're less reliant. They'll be like, I can't tell you what other things I used to do, but I don't do them anymore. Okay, well, I'm glad to hear that. Outside of school, Mandel sees Marana High as a fixture in the community, where many of its graduates continue to live and eventually send their own children to the district. He believes parents play a key role in keeping students from vaping. You know, looking forward, I hope that parents are continue to be our partner in this and, and aim for students to not use substances that we know harm them uh, in the future. Our goal is high school graduation. And uh, so the things that get in the way of that and, and create an unsafe environment or create uh, barriers to students graduating, I want to see all those go away.